Hello and welcome to CT Brandon. My name is Charles and I'm one of the pastors here. So thank you for joining us online today. In a moment, we will have Michael Fisher, our lead pastor here at CT, with part two of the five-part series on Jonah we started last week. If you're new here with us today, I especially want to welcome you to CT Brandon's online campus. We're so glad you're here and we would love to get to know you. If you click the link in the description below labeled new here and fill out the form, we can get in touch with you later in the week. And we promise we will not spam you. Just want to see if there's anything we can pray for you for or help you with. And that's it. And if you haven't yet, would you hit that like button, maybe share this video with a friend and make sure to stick around to the end. We have some exciting things happening here at CT we think you might want to know about. Before we begin, I want to read Psalms chapter 19 and it says this the heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim the works of his hands day after day they pour forth speech night after night they reveal knowledge they have no speech they use no words no sound is heard from them yet their voice goes out into all the earth their words to the end of the world in the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun it is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber like a champion rejoicing to run his course it rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other nothing is deprived of its warmth the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warmed, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me, then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let's turn things over to Pastor Michael. Jonah, session two, my free will versus God's creativity. Today, we're going to talk about free will, disobedience, and the creativity of God. Let's start with free will. This is always an interesting discussion, especially inside of Christianity. This has been a fun and entertaining debate. Now, I believe that free will exists inside of God's sovereignty. Because of who he is, he gives us the choice to come to him or to run. We learned last week that running is futile from the presence of God because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In him we live and breathe and have our being. But then that brings us to the question of abuse. You can and probably have at some point in your life abused free will. The Lord has sorry, the world has always been full of this abuse. It shows up and looks a lot like brokenness, 
Uh, so abuse of alcohol, speed, substances, drugs, all, all of these and so much more leads to the immense brokenness inside our lives and adds to the brokenness in the world around us. Romans 14, 7 says that we do not live or die to ourselves. So, but without beating yourselves up about it, we can all think of times when we have had actions that affected other people. Maybe there are times where you purposely inflicted pain or on other people, or maybe there are times that you had no idea you were causing people grief. Either way, there are always consequences to our actions. Our actions affect others for both good and bad. Think about any movie you've ever seen about time travel, even, even though that's not real, but it doesn't matter today. The big stress is never to do anything that is going to have ripple effects on someone else's lives. You squash a bug millions of years ago, and today, cats rule the world. You chop down the wrong tree in a medieval forest, and today's time, we have alien superpowers taking over Ikea. We, we never know how things are going to affect other people. Jonah 1, 4 to 6 is where we pick up our story. It says this, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below the deck where he lay and fell asleep into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Jonah's disobedience had consequences and it put people's lives in danger. Let's look at the situation. A great wind came and caused a storm. Remember, we are not the original audience for the book of Jonah. This story was intended for other people long before we ever got our eyes on it. Now, some of the language used give us uh, some clues as to what the original intent would have been. The Hebrew word for wind, for instance, is the same Hebrew word that was used in Genesis 1 when we described the the, the Spirit of God and how it was hovering during creation. Or in Isaiah 40, 13, when the prophets talk about the, the God, then who can even understand God? Same words. So this, this word is a lot more than just a regular wind. Throughout the Old Testament and in many other places, it is used to describe the Spirit of God as creative, flowing, and sometimes disruptive. From this, we start learning something about God and maybe a little bit about Jonah. First, that Jonah is important. Important enough for the same word as the creation of the world to be used in the creative powers that tried to get his attention. This is a huge use of language by the author, absolutely massive. Secondly, we understand that God is willing and able to use his creativity to get people's attention. Have you ever been in a situation where too many things are lining up and it's like, God, are you trying to tell me something? And it could clearly only be God. Maybe there's a precedent here. Now, God had to break out all the stops because of Jonah's behavior. It was subpar. Jonah assumed that his decisions and actions in life had no effect on other people. In his self-absorbed behavior, he was literally and figuratively asleep. In our moments of rebellion, we distance ourselves from the awareness that our negligence can, and in fact, create profound ripple effects in the lives of others. We even make excuses. Well, it all worked out in the end. 
Who cares if it all worked out? Living in okay reality is nothing compared with how good God's perfect can be for us because it takes the guts to accept the call of God and live it out. Remember a while back, someone had mentioned this, uh, this conversation about youth culture and how there just seems to be a lack of resilience in many of the, many of the youth of today. I don't want to throw youth under the bus, but I, I think that resilience is one of the things that is necessary in life to answer God's call. Maybe God isn't asking you to speak to parliament, but he is asking you to pray for your neighbor. Maybe not prophesying the destruction of an evil empire, but is asking you to just pray with your uncle who lost all hope. Selfishness says, maybe later. Resilience says, I'm on my way. Let's continue with Jonah, verses 7 to 10. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who's responsible for this calamity. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? What people are you? He answered, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them. And they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from God because he had already told them. Can you imagine someone saying, what have you done to make God angry that your life looks like this and it's affecting us too? Wow. So Jonah is discovered by the sailors to be guilty. And then they start to fire these questions at him. In response, Jonah was willing to talk about God. But here's the problem he sure wasn't willing to talk to God. And that's why we're in this situation to begin with. Talking is great, but far too often we will talk to ourselves. We will talk to our friends. We'll even talk to our pastors before we even think about just talking to God. Do we honestly believe that someone else is going to have the answer that God was keeping from us this whole time? That's ridiculous. If I have a situation that has to do with me and God, I might want to start with him. I might want to start just talking to God. If you have a situation going on with someone in your life and you start by talking with someone else about it, it's called gossip. So why not start with God? That's what Jonah should have done in the first place. It would have saved a lot of people a ton of heartache. Let's continue in verse 11 to 16. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that this is my fault, that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land. Nice guys. But they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard. And the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Whatever he said about God, mixed with the results of throwing him overboard, caused these guys to turn their hearts to God. I guess God still shows up even when we don't. Here, here's five things I want you to write down for today and think about throughout the week. Number one, you get to make decisions in your life. You have free will. How does that make you feel? Two, the decisions you make always affect other people. Three, 
God is creative and he will creatively get your attention. Number four, there is an optimal life for you inside of Jesus. Are you settling because of selfishness? Finally, number five, this week, I, all I want you to do, write this down and do this. Learn to talk to God more than you talk about him. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you have any questions or comments, just let us know down below. And if you haven't already, would you like this video and consider subscribing? If you're new here, don't forget to click that new here link in the description below and connect with us. Would you like an opportunity to know some of the people here in our community or learn more about CT, maybe make a new friend or two? Well, come out to the Newcomer Lunch on October 15th after the service. We'll have some delicious food and plenty of time for conversation and getting to know each other. If you're new here to CT in person or online, online, this is for you. Just visit the event page and sign up there. We also want to personally invite you to consider getting baptized if you haven't already. It's a powerful and meaningful step in your faith journey. So if you're interested, we can provide you with all the information you need or answer any questions you might have. Our next baptism service is on November 5th. Just visit ctbrennan.com and click the baptism link on the events page for more info to sign up or ask questions. For more details on these events and more, just visit our events page on our website. Here at CT, we believe giving is an expression of worship. If you're new here, please don't feel compelled to give. Worship is a retelling, a refocusing, and reflecting on God's story. Biblical principles have little to do with, uh, sorry, on money, have little to do with our income, but they have everything to do with our obedience and spiritual discipline. When we give, it's an act of worship that I find refocuses our priorities, placing our trust in God. Again, if you're new here, please don't feel compelled to give. The money we receive here at CT helps support everything we do here, like amazing events and discipleship for youth or people overseas that help feed the hungry and homeless or things like our upcoming Halloween parking lot party. Last year, we had over 1,500 people in our community and we were able to put it on completely free because of your generosity. These are just a few of the many things we get to do here at CT because of your giving. So your generosity and tithes and offerings are greatly appreciated. They help us to continue to provide provide a welcoming and safe community. So whether it's a one-time donation or an ongoing gift, thank you so much. It goes a long way. So for those who did come prepared to give, the best fee-free way is e-transfer. Info at ctbrandon.com. But if you prefer another method, just visit the Give tab on our website. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and give you his peace. Thank you again for joining us. Make sure to connect with us online throughout the week on Facebook or Instagram, and we'll see you next time.